Good morning. So I've been thinking about toolmaker's jacks now for past month or so. Uh, in my career, anytime I needed a toolmaker's jack, you would just toss any two pieces of hardware together and that was your jack. But lately, I've been desiring something with a little more resolution and a ball tip for a little better kinematics. And my first attempt was to assemble four balls, hold them into location with a 3D print, and then use a shaft collar to tighten the diameter of the pyramid base, which would then cause the center ball to rise. This worked really quite well. Um, incredible resolution, very smooth action. But the problem is when you got three of them in a configuration, there wasn't much height underneath and it took up an enormous amount of space. So I realized I needed to come back to a more traditional shape for a toolmaker's jack. And this is where I landed. The design uses four off-the-shelf components and four 3D printed components. And the, the key to its success uh, is this thread adapter. It's a inch metric thread adapter. So on the female side, it's M8 by 1.25. And on the male side, it's 5 16 by 18. Those two threads are very close together in size. And what that gives you is a difference in pitch of six thou and three tenths, or 161 microns. So if we were to assemble these and then lock the nut and screw together rotationally and just adjust the adapter, that would give us a differential screw setup, which each revolution of the adapter hex would yield that six thou and three tenths or 161 microns in axial growth. So that's a pretty decent resolution for what I'm doing. And uh, I wanted to figure out a good way to do it with printing. And this is what I came up with. We have a lower mount, which clips onto the hex. As you can see, there's a little protrusion on the flats and it clips into the undercut on the nut. And then the upper mount, we take advantage of the knurling on the flange screw and it just press fits together. And that's a pretty tight assembly. Um, the other thing you'll want to do is if you stone off the bottom of the screw, you'll see they're usually a little convex, which is problematic. So you'll want to stone and maybe even lap the screw base. I've tried to not do any machining on these, but if you were to put a small uh, counter bore where I have it sharpied, and just so you have a small angular or annular band of contact on the nut, that would increase stability a lot. Um, as for the kinematic ball tip, an M8 socket head screw will have a six millimeter hex in it. So that's uh, a pretty good press fit. Those measure about 240 thousandths. So if we drop a 250 thousandths ball bearing in there and press fit, it swages in quite nicely. Uh, if you don't want to use those sizes, you could perhaps machine a counter bore undersize and press fit a different size ball in. But uh, uh, the the six millimeter hex and a quarter inch ball is a, a nice convenient way to go. So once you have all of your components, it's really pretty straightforward to assemble. You just screw everything together. And then you get your compliance springs. So these have a little bit of stretch in them. And so they're loading the assembly axially, which takes care of some of the thread slop. And then they're also controlling, locking the rotation of the nut and screw together. So we want to pop in the lower tab, and then we're going to adjust the screw up until it's actually too advanced. Um, maybe even one more. And then we'll stretch the spring and clip it in. And now we have axial preload.
There we go. So that's our jack assembly. The concept can be expanded into things like uh, kinematic bases, and I just have the top located with a Maxwell mount, and then more of these little printed springs holding it all together. Um, and then the concept can also be applied to smaller screws. This is an M5 and a 1032, and that yields a differential pitch of 2 tenths, 50 millionths of an inch, or about a micron per flat. Each, each flat increment would yield a micron of growth, which I think is really quite profound for off-the-shelf hardware. So uh, you, can, you can go a lot of different directions depending on which threads you pick. So I, I think this is a, a good direction, and I, I wanted to throw it out there and see what people could do with it iteratively. I've set the jack up on the Heidenheim gauge. I think this would be a good place to visualize the movement. So we'll just kind of get one of the flats squared up and zero the gauge. We can see one flat increment is a, a thou and a tenth and some change. And then if we go through, do an entire rev, we should see about six thou and three tenths. There we go. A um, little bit of little bit of wiggle. I found by putting some PTFE thread tape on the male threads, it greatly improves the stability and the smoothness of the run. Uh, I don't know how long term that will be. There's a lot of back and forth, and I can see the PTFE rolling off and jamming. So I want to find a little better solution there, but otherwise I think this is really pretty astonishing performance, and I'm, I'm really pleased with it. So to see it on the 3-axis stage, we have this part leveled out, and you can kind of see how how smooth that is. Um, really, really, really nice. And the other thing is, since it's metal all the way down to the granite, you don't get a lot of sag over time. Uh, building things on on PLA and putting weight on them, adjusters, you you tend to notice they they move around on you when when they sit. So. I think this is really great performance. Um, I have it partially disassembled. I wanted to show the Maxwell mount. It's just uh, two roller bearings per ball bearing, and they're they're held in via a compliant fit. And uh, yeah, that's how it locates. And once it's on, it's a bit of a three-armed affair. Once it's on, you would just snap the tension springs over and then all, all the uh, assembly has some actual preload on it. And so I think in order to get this kind of performance with off-the-shelf hardware, you'd normally have to use something like this 100 TPI adjuster. And these are about $40 a piece. And I have one of these assemblies down to $11.88. So I think there's a, if you're fielding a lot of these, like let's say in optics, um, I think you can save yourself a lot of money with this approach and uh, actually have better resolution per turn. Um, and the form factor on these is pretty good. It's not much bigger than a typical screw adjuster. So I think this is worth looking into if you need to make adjustments on stuff. Thanks for watching to the end. And I'd like to especially thank the people who have shared their versions of the things I've made in my videos with me. Uh, I've seen V-Block concepts from all over the world and it's been really interesting and enjoyable to have that shared with me. Uh, I've seen some beautiful magnetic parallels get made as well. So I hope this is useful to somebody and if it is, I'd love to see what you do with the concept. Thank you.